12 volts going to be the positive terminal of our piezoelectric. Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. In this episode, we're going to take the Hermes Light 2 and get it to do straight key CW. If you order a Hermes Light 2 Plus, it comes with a companion board and a slightly different front panel. So you can plug your microphone straight in to the front panel rather than using the uh, virtual audio cable on the computer. And you can also plug your headphones straight into the front of the Hermes Light 2 as well to listen on it and uh, a Kia. It also provides a local side tone. Doing it via the software, I have been told there's latency issues and that the companion board's the only way to go. And then other people have said on the forum, no, it's standalone, it'll work as it is. So I have tried the straight key into the front of this and I will show you how that works in a moment via a, an online uh, SDR radio. You can have a listen for yourself. It works fine. You can transmit no problem at all with the straight key at the speeds I'm sending and uh, it's, it's fantastic. The only issue, of course, is that you don't have side tone. Now, um, a simple solution to solve that problem for me, of course, would be just to tune one of my other receivers to a, a nearby frequency. And to use the RF that's bleeding into it as my side tone, but uh, I don't like that solution. I don't like having other radios on while I'm using this one. So the uh, other option is to do a very low-fi homebrew version of a Kia for a straight key that's going to generate a side tone and key the uh, transmitter from the front panel of the Hermes. So that's the route I'm going to be taking. So I will quickly show you uh, the circuit that I've done on the board later on in this video and we'll have a look at uh, how that operates with the side tone once we get the side tone. So bear with me a moment and we'll uh, toddle off to an online SDR and we'll just have a listen to how well this thing transmits on CW. Let's just check and see if anybody's home. Nobody home. So this is the uh, VK2 GGC, I think Hunter Valley SDR online receiver. This is just keying straight into the front panel. We're going about 300 k's, I think. Way to go, ham-fisted. So as you can see there, it works quite well uh, with a straight key. No problems at all. The only issue is no side tone. So let's see if we can uh, do something about that. Well, that was Daniel, and um, it's lovely to hear some uh, QRS uh, code that I could copy for a change. <laughs> awesome, Daniel. Great to hear you on the bands. Great to hear some CW out there, and keep it up. And um, he may be sending slowly for the benefit of other people to get people out there as well. So he may have begun and it's been nice for me. <laughs> um, but at any rate, clear sending and great, great code. So here's the start of the build. As you know, I like to use things that I've already gotten. Down here in the uh, in the junk pile, we had this. It's an audio visual extender for uh, uh, wireless remote and whatnot, and uh, pretty old school stuff. But 
it's a nice plastic case. So what I've done is I have ripped the electronics out of this case and I'm going to do an ugly build on this Kia for the Hermes Light 2. And we're building ugly style. And that's the start of the build. I've taken the DC barrel that was on the circuit board and it was a circuit board mount one. I could have got one that screws in, but what I've done is I've just gotten super glue and glued that in. And we put the relay on here, dead bug style, and we'll go from here. So once I've got all the bits and pieces in, we'll, uh, I'll show you the completed build and we'll uh, put it in the server and see how it works. Here's a few more bits that I've got to, uh, to put in there. Switch to switch it on and off. And uh, we are going to use this uh, 12 volt piezo buzzer. I don't know whether the note's going to be pleasant enough, but uh, we'll give it a crack. We're just splicing in that extra power barrel. And this is the power that's uh, running the Hermes. And for anyone that's interested, that is my 20 amp linear supply. Video in the hand playlist below. And I actually uh, rewound microwaves to... Uh, to get the necessary transformer to run this thing, rewound them. Hi folks, if you're enjoying the mayhem that is My Ham Radio Studio slash Shack, please reach down, hit the like, and hit the subscribe button. And if you have a Shack that's shambolic, or maybe it's organized, it'd be great for you to share it. So drop a comment down below and maybe send me a link to a, a video of your Shack, because uh, I'm a Shack pervert. I like to see what other people are getting up to in their Shacks. Anyway, Back to the video. Oh, Mr. Hart, what a mess. There you have it, folks. That's the Foster SDR. And uh, so thank you to Foster SDR. I think it's um, Andy Kerr that was the owner of this one. Fantastic station. It's very nice uh, for him to provide this uh, SDR. And I always put my call sign in there to let him know that uh, it's me that's using it because it's always a, a courtesy to do that. As you can see here, the Kia that I've built, you can turn the power off on it. When the power is on, you've got a red LED. And when you key, you get a green LED. I'll just put the microphone near the uh, near the SDR so you can hear it. And this is the Kia minus the SDR. So normally you can't hear side tone on this Thetis going straight into the front panel. And this is uh, just what you would hear. Now, I know what you're thinking. Shrill note, too high a frequency. I could always grab a 555 integrated circuit, build myself a little oscillator, and have it either variable tone or set it to a frequency that's more pleasant. But I'm just happy to have a, a Kia that works and uh, I think I could get used to it. It's not too obtrusive. And like I was saying, if I want to, uh, if I want to uh, get rid of it, I just plug straight into the front of the, uh, the Hermes. Now the relay I used was an Omron, and I'll just write the uh, code for it up here. It was a G6 
f 2f y d c 12 which means it's a 12 volt relay and pin out So that's your coil, and they're your terminals. They're normally closed between 10 and 9 and 3 and 4. And then when the relay activates, 9 and 8 close. So these two close, and these two close. Okay, folks, here goes nothing on explaining this um, very, very simple circuit. We've got a 13.8 volt rail positive and our um, ground here. And when we close the power switch, that feeds to our 3.5 mil jack at the front and the straight key is plugged into that and that will then take us down if we close our key 13.8 volts is applied to the coil which is going to activate the relay contacts and we've also got attached to this power switch when it's switched on a 600 ohm resistor and a red led written in green quite unhelpfully and so the 600 ohm um, resistor i just cobble together some resistors to get close to 20 milliamps of current. So you can do your um, current equals voltage over resistance. 13.8 volts over the resistance will give you your, uh, if you do resistance in ohms, will give you your current in um, amps. And so you should get 0 0.02 um, amps. That's your red lead. So that comes on when the power is applied. When you close the key and the relay coil is activated, what it does is it closes two of these contacts. Now, one of the contacts has no voltage applied to it, so we don't want to be feeding voltage back into our uh, Hermes. It uh, it might not like having voltage fed into it. So I was, you know, thinking about using a, a microcontroller, but there'd be voltages present. I'm just worried I was going to stuff things up. Diabolically simple. This will close the uh, the jack on the Hermes light, and your push to talk jack will be activated, and the thing will go to transmit. It'll also close this contact, which is also connected to our 12 volts off our straight key. And what that's going to do is it's going to light a, gr a green LED, which once again has a current limiting resistor in series with it. And we also have our 12 volts going to the positive terminal of our piezoelectric buzzer. And if that's annoying the hell out of you um, frequency wise and whatnot, you could get a lower frequency buzzer or you could just build yourself a triple five uh, circuit. It's an oscillator and, you know, choose your components wisely to get the tone that you want. You could even make it variable tone if you liked, or you could use a microcontroller here. There's a million and one things you could do at this end of things. And you do all of this at your own risk because I have got this thing to transmit in CW, not in the way that's recommended in the manual as far as I can tell. From what I can tell in the manual, they're asking you to connect uh, sleeve to tip to get it in transmit and get your ring to tip to send CW. So maybe that's injecting a tone into the system. I actually don't know how that all works, but um, what I have done is my key is all my um, jacks are wired sleeve to tip. When you short sleeve to tip, the uh, thing goes into transmit. And I've also set one of the parameters so that uh, you minimize the, the key jittering. So we don't have full break in QSK or whatever key, but um, I don't like that. I like the thing to be transmitting or receiving. So care of all the simple transmitters uh, that, and receivers and whatnot that I've been using homebrew. So you have seen me demonstrate this system through a, an online SDR and also using this uh, sleeve to tip configuration when I did the QSO in the video. So it works for me. Latency and all that sort of stuff. Because I'm not operating a Kia and I'm not operating at high speed, all that's done away with. But you know, people, what's the rush? Slow down. You know, smell the roses. I'm on school holiday, so I don't know why I'm doing all this uh, chalk and talk. Let's get back to the shark. One other thing I noticed, and this may not be the best way of doing it, but that's the way I've done it, is in these settings into general here and we go options they've got some delays here these are all set to 10 i think that was the default setting if it's not that's what i've got it set on at the moment it seems to be working well on both sideband and cw but i set this key up parameter here to a half a second i think it's in milliseconds sets the delay between carrier removal and push to talk dropout and the reason why i've set that as high as it is is because originally i was getting a bit of relay chatter 
from the uh, Hermes. It seemed to be dropping into receive. Now, it didn't seem to be affecting the key, uh, the actual transmitting, and I was listening on an SDR, and all the uh, letters were still coming out fully formed. So it may not have been a problem, but no, I'm not a big fan of full break in keying. I like it to be the transmitting or receiving. Probably care of actually working transmitter-receiver combinations for such a long time and very rudimentary a switch to transmit sort of situation. So um, I have set that delay quite high. So if you want it to operate that way, that's something you can play around with as well. I am having the time of my life presently with this a little SDR transceiver. It's been a real hoot. That's a station in the States. I think it's W2, Whiskey 2, Victor Papa. Please pardon the rain in the background. It is really noisy here. It's pouring down in Sydney at the moment. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. We now have a new piece of equipment, some side tone in the shack. And uh, I'm happy with it. Some people would probably drive them batty, but I teach high school, use seven art. So that's not noisy for me at all. It's the shrill tone of an excited child. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thank you for sticking around right to the end. Please comment below what you think of my very lo-fi side tone generator. And I shall see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering 7.3. Bye.